Hi guys, welcome to my video. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the Warm Up America donation numbers, the final count that came in. What we were able to accomplish in such a short amount of time is just absolutely incredible. I can't wait to share these numbers with you. They even broke down what pro the number of specific project categories there were. So I'm gonna share all that information with you. And then after I'm done sharing with you the Warm Up America donation numbers, I have a yarn haul to share. So I went to the DFW Yarn Festival, or DFW Yarn Fest, and I'm gonna share with you what I purchased from the Yarn Festival. So I figured apart these videos weren't, it wasn't enough content to have it its own video, but if I joined them together, it would make for a really great video. So here we go. The Warm Up America donation numbers, and I'm extremely impressed, and even Sherry with Warm Up America was like, wow, you guys did such an incredible job. So give yourself a pat on the back if you helped participate in this campaign. What they were asking for with this campaign, it was a bit of a challenge, because if you recall, they were asking for like lapgans or adult blankets was the big ask, but if you needed to, you could obviously donate the rectangular sections or a beanie or a scarf. Those were more than welcome as well. So what they broke down, and honestly this is all based on the information from the people that uh, included in their donations the little sheet of paper specifying that it went to our campaign. They got lots and lots of or they constantly get donations, but unless they know that it's for our specific campaign, it just kind of gets in the inner mix of, okay, this is gonna go to this location or this is gonna go to that location, but it didn't actually count towards our numbers. So if you didn't include a, the sheet of paper that um, specified what campaign your donations were going towards, they used your donations, they love your donations, it just didn't count or was included in these numbers. So I have a feeling that these numbers are actually low compared to what was actually donated towards our campaign, but they can only go off of what they were able to receive within the sheet of paper that was received. Also, if your donation came after the deadline, they she did specify they were getting a couple things that came after the deadline. Again, they're more than happy to have it, it just didn't count towards our campaign. So like I said, these numbers are probably a little light to what was actually donated towards our campaign, but it's still quite impressive. Okay, so the total number of veteran blankets, blankets that made it in, 81. 81 full blankets made it in towards this campaign. Oh my gosh, okay, veteran hats. There were 209 veteran hats that were donated. Rectangular sections, 1,544 rectangular sections were donated. Oh my gosh, that is so incredibly amazing. Scarves, they had 88 scarves donated. They had five pairs of mittens donated. And in all, all together, that was 1,927 items donated to Warm Up America's veteran campaign in that 30 day time span that the campaign was going on. Bravo, guys. Major, major pat on the back, applause for you. That was impressive. And even in here she goes, it was an amazing campaign. Thank you so much for partnering, partnering with us. We are so grateful. So, wow, that is so awesome. I've already reached out to her and I said, we had so much fun and I can't wait for our next campaign that we can help out with. But I did mention to her <laughs> in the email, I was like, with our next campaign, why don't we plan it out like two months in advance? That way I can inform my followers or anyone who would like to participate in our Warm Up America campaign. Give you guys like a month notice, like, hey guys, in one month, we have the America uh, Warm Up America campaign going on. That way, if anyone wants a little bit more time to create stuff, they can have a little bit more time. Because yeah, that one was a little hard, especially when they were asking for blankets and lapgans. It's like, yeah, I would love to make that for you, but that's that can be a big ask, depending on how busy your life is and how often you're able to crochet something. So good job, guys. Great job. 
All right, so that is it for the Warm Up America campaign. Can't wait to start a new one. We've already talked about possibly in the spring of 2023 like right after the holidays, right after January. But in spring, we might do our next campaign together. So that's exciting. Okay, DFW Fiber Fest was this last weekend and I was able to make it on Saturday. Thank you so much, Kendra, for giving me the heads up that this was actually going on because I was not in the loop. I'm generally not in the loop when it comes to events happening just because I stay in my own little world. I'm a homebody and I just get my focus, hyper focused on. Dude, shh, I'm talking. You're interrupting me. Shh. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down, buddy. You got it. Thank you. Good. Good boy. Lay down. Good boy. I know. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so I was super happy that she mentioned it was even happening. So that way I could go to the Fiber Festival and check it out. Cause you know, yarn, all things yarn, yummy, yummy yarn, colors, uh, different colors, different yarn dyeing artists and all of the fun things that are there. I went there and I had to get the bag. The bag was optional, but I was like, no, I, I have to get all the things. I'm here. I want to like have the full experience. And this bag is thick. It is so thick and it's got that durable. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a heavy duty bag right there. It, but it's, it's a large tote, but there's no pockets inside. But it's, well, there's a pocket on the outside but that's the one pocket on the back. It has all of the, um, the, or the sponsors to the event. So that's, that's cool. But, oh my gosh, I had to limit myself on how much I could buy there at the event because this is all very special yarn, specialty yarn, and a, all of it was hand dyed yarn. So. These people are artists. They spend a lot of time on the fibers. They select on the colors they use and they are having to pay for the booth and some of them were from out of state so they were having to pay for travel fees. So the yarn itself was more expensive. I think on average every skein of yarn that I purchased was a little more than $30. So I it was like an ouch for sure to buy any of the yarn because $30 per skein, that's a lot of money. But for me personally, I was thinking two things. One, I was thinking, okay, I'm supporting an artist. This isn't, um, this isn't yarn that you would find at any bargain store. This isn't yarn that you could buy with a coupon. This is yarn that there's only one of them because they were hand dyed. You, it's going to be hard to buy multiples and even the ones that I did buy multiples of, you can tell that they have their own variations and their own differences. So there's definitely a reason why they charge as much as they charge. But for that reason, it was like, oh dear, I have to be very cautious and careful on what I buy because this is this is a lot of money right here. But what I wanted to show you guys was this yarn right here. I got from Jim's Lux Fibers. Every yarn that I got, tr I tried to go like color, like anything that grabbed my attention with color. And so there is this beauty right here. There we go. And when I saw this beauty, I thought of Halloween, like that gorgeous green mixed with that beautiful purple. And I was just like, oh, I have to do something for Halloween with this beauty. And this right here, here it's classic DK. And that was the other thing. I had a hard time focusing on sizes that I would actually use because I'm a DK or worsted Erin for, I'm either a three weight or four weight person. Uh, a lot of the yarn that they were selling was a sock yarn or a size one weight yarn. And I'm like one, two, and I'm like, I don't often use that size, but okay. So 
This yarn was beautiful. It is called Texas Flowers, though. I mean, honestly, I got it because it reminded me of Halloween. So that'll be, that'll be fun to either play with or give away in a giveaway. We'll see. We'll see what I decide to do with it. The next yarn that I found, honestly, I thought of my husband. <laughs> I saw it and I was like, oh. you know when you make those connections and you're like, okay, I, I got that because it instantly made me think of a certain person. And it's this guy right here. And the reason why it reminds me of my husband is because my husband is a Miami Dolphins football fan. Has been since he was a little boy and diehard Miami Dolphins NFL professional football. And so when I saw these colors, I was like, oh my gosh, I've never made socks before, but now I want to try. <laughs> So I'm going to try to make socks with this guy. So this is from um, the Silly Goose Yarns. Silly Goose Yarns. And this is a plump fingering weight yarn. And it's called Syracuse. If you want to know all of the things, don't remember the prices of these guys. So you're going to have to go on their websites to find the actual prices. So this one, the Halloween one that I love so much was... Um, JulesLuxFibers.com and I'll put all this information in the description section and comment section below but JulesLuxFibers.com and this was the color Texas Wildflowers and in here there's it's 100% superwash merino 8 ply 274 yards and it says hand wash cold but that's all it gave for that this guy right here is from they don't have the website on the thing but I'll put the website below it's silly goose yarns color Syracuse plump fingering 75% merino 25% nylon 463 yards 100 grams hand washing cold lay flat to dry so there's that and then I got these guys so I thought these were adorable so I ended up buying like two orange and two of this like charcoal black because I was like I could do something fun Halloweeny with those you know something super fun but then when I bought this guy they didn't have and I was like I'm gonna get so I'm gonna make socks with this I was like is that enough to make one pair of men's socks and the lady vendor was like mm, maybe if you had a different color for the toe and the heel so I was like I'll just take these and use them for the toe and the heel of the socks that I make. And I was like, that'll be perfect, because the orange is like spot on perfect orange. But then I'm left with these two, and I'm like, hmm, what can I do with those? Hmm, I could do some fun Halloween-y things with those. You know, they're just enough yarn. Just enough to do something fun. I could even make some fingerless gloves with those. That would be really cute. So these right here, all four of them, are from the same place from Chaos Fibers Fiber Co. Chaos Fiber Co. Hand dyed yarn, so all hand dyed. Um, got a website, chaosfiberco.com. These four are 100% superwash merino wool, sock weight, 85 yards or 20 grams per skein. And it's from Georgetown, Texas, and that's all they provide for that information. But two of those orange and then two of these beautiful like black gray colors. So I'll figure something out to do with those. And then last but not least, like I said, I tried to be as supportive as I possibly could, but without breaking the bank too much. But I got four of these guys. Oh my gosh, I just am in love with this color. Look at that. Look at the fiber. Oh yeah. All right, so these four are the exact same. And I asked her, I was like, do you have a worsted weight, you know, a size four? Do you have that? And they did have it in this because I thought this was gorgeous. So this is also from Silly Goose Yarns. Got the little taggy thing right there. This is called um, That's 70s Yarn, 
which I'm like, okay, I don't understand, I don't get the name for that, but all right, that 70s yarn. Plump worsted, 100% merino, 213 yards, 100 grams, hand wash in cold water, lay flat to dry. So my idea for this yarn was I'm going to make a chunky, like blanket scarf, you know, one of those really big scarves that are really thick that could also double as like a wrap. That's what I'm gonna make with these. I'll, I'll use all four of them in the same project. So it's gonna be very interesting making a tutorial. I'm gonna have to figure that out, making a tutorial after I make this project because I ran out, of the, ran out of the material. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But um, so yeah, I got these four. I'm super excited. So the one common thing that I noticed when I was there at the festival was color so much bold color. And I just released a video on me being at Fiberfest and kind of showing you what I saw a little bit, a bit of a glimpse, and just seeing all of the bold, like, bam, color. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm looking at my yarn right now and I'm still in last year's trends, I feel. I'm still in last year's trends where everything was muted and calming and like it was just muted colors whereas this year it's more like bold deep rich colors and I was just looking at it like oh my gosh I'm tempted to just scrap everything and start over with all these gorgeous colors but I'm not going to do that I might give more away in giveaways, <laughs> but I, I also want to finish up a bunch of projects so that way I can move things out and bring thing, bring new things in and just kind of shift my yarn stash that way by finishing projects and probably giving a lot of yarn away in giveaways and trying to restock with the new bold, beautiful colors that are really popular this year especially this fall and winter. So, yeah, it was so fun. There are so many gorgeous colors. I wish I could have bought so much more, but that would have killed me. <laughs> so that is the yarn that I purchased, and I can't wait to work up some amazing patterns with these, amazing projects with these. And some of them, like the socks, for example, that's probably going to end up being like a Christmas present for my husband because, again, I was thinking of him, what his likes are, what he enjoys most, and he loves uh, professional football and professional basketball. Like, he has his two favorite teams that he watches every single year, and when I saw these, I was like, I'm going to make those, and he's going to love them because I thought of him not in, I made you crochet socks. Appreciate that I made you handmade crochet socks. He's going to appreciate that you made me something because you know I love that. And that is the connection that we should be making people when we make them stuff. Is not, they should love it because I made it, but they love it because I had them in mind in something that they love when I created this. And so that is just, it's how you hit the nail on the head with your projects. <laughs> That's how you do it. It's the secret sauce right there. So yes, I'm excited to play with these things. I'm excited to think of what project or pattern. I'm, I already have the projects in mind for like the four skeins of this guy. I want to make that big, bold blanket scarf slash wrap. I need to just kind of brainstorm what pattern I want to use with this gorgeous yarn because I want the color of this yarn to be the star of the show because it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So I want that to be the star of the show, but I also want the pattern to complement it and be really pretty as well. So you will see. You will see. Anyways, that is my video. I hope you had a lot of fun hearing about our Warm Up America numbers because you guys rocked it. You did such awesome things. And I hope you enjoyed seeing what I was able to grab from the DFW Fiber Fest. I hope you have a great day, guys, and I'll see you with the next one. Bye.